The Roaring Twenties was a time of adventure, power, growth, and transformation. More people lived in cities than rural areas for the first time. Goods were mass-produced, and consumers had less awareness of where and who their go goods came from. People generally had less contact with animals, green spaces, a chance to gaze at the horizon or breathe clean air. Americans felt a powerful pull to be modern, and old patterns of human civilization were being destroyed. The new mass consumer economy of the decade knew no bounds. It was a cancer that consumed both communities and Wall Street. Public good was under siege by the goods life of consumerism. While most of the nation was leaning into the woes of society, a faction of urban visionaries were leaning away from them and into humanity. One voice in particular was difficult not to hear, that of Lewis Mumford. No one title fully captured the essence of Mumford's work, but he has been called an urbanist, art critic, historian, environmentalist, and sociologist. He was committed to the urban form as a locus of collective culture and spent his career wandering, studying, and working in cities, connecting many separate disciplines in his writing. Mumford was a staunch critic of modern cities with an optimistic vision for how people might design and occupy urban spaces more sustainably. Mumford suggested a humanistic approach to city planning. One of his main challenges was to conceptualize the good life. He saw the good life as a social and environmental ideal, a life where humans were unconcerned about consumerism and instead valued the environment, arts, and civic virtue. He believed the good life could be cultivated. He and his colleagues created the model of regional planning, in which a region of mid-sized garden cities containing parks, playgrounds, dense housing, industry, and commerce, all connected by a network of agriculture and wilderness areas. As a founding member of the Regional Planning Association of America, RPAA, he and collaborator Benton McKay convinced the group to adopt the environmental principles inherent in this newly created regionalism. RPAA's first major project was Sunnyside Gardens in Queens, New York. It was an expansive neighborhood with narrow apartment buildings opening inward into common green spaces that fostered contact, investment into communal living, and spirited political life. Mumford and his family enjoyed living at Sunnyside Gardens for 11 years. After moving away, he published The Culture of Cities in 1938 a seminal text in which he deeply explored the history of cities, his critique of modern cities, and how Mumford saw that cities should develop. Although it was published 80 years ago, many of its ideals are still relevant today. Unfortunately, Mumford was the exception, not the rule. City and regional planning became a mechanism for continued growth and expansion of cities, exactly what they sought to prevent. He referred to the growing suburban ruin as a machine-made fabric, increasingly standardized, regimented, and characterless. Mumford warned of the common thread of failed civilizations. Once cities surpassed the limits of functional size and use, a pattern of deterioration followed. All is not lost. For instance, a faction of urban planners called New Urbanists remain rooted in Mumford's utopian vision of a pedestrian-friendly city in balance with nature. Other disciplines have emerged from the shadow of climate change, following Mumford by connecting environmental and social issues to transform the world and the pedestrian experience.